The Holy Roman Empire is neither holy, nor Roman, nor an empire. Quick history lesson, the Holy Roman Empire and the Ancient Roman Empire are not the same thing. The Holy Roman Empire was a multi-ethnic complex of territories in Western and Central Europe that developed during the early Middle Ages when the Pope crowned Charlemagne as the King of the Franks. This was an attempt to give the impression that the Ancient Roman Empire had risen again, and the union of the Church and the Empire would reclaim the previous one. The Holy Roman Empire lasted until its dissolution in 1806 during the Napoleonic Wars. Ancient Rome, on the other hand, was the post-Republican period of Ancient Rome. It included large territorial holdings around the Mediterranean Sea in Europe, Northern Africa, and Western Asia, ruled by emperors. The empire reached its greatest territorial expanse during the reign of Trajan, ending in 117 AD, upon his death. From that point onwards, Rome went into a period of decline until it finally collapsed in 476. The reason for such declines are complex, however, one thing that history has taught us is that most human empires do not fail simply due to external threats, but because of internal weakness, government corruption, political instability, and a loss of traditional values and ideals that the empire once espoused. Enter America, the last standing empire, an empire which is on its last legs, an empire experiencing the death throes of a failing state, something seen by every fallen empire that came before it. America is on the brink of collapse. On 6th of January 2021, supporters of President Donald Trump stormed the US Capitol in an attempt to stop Congress from certifying President-elect Joe Biden's election victory. The media, of course, are blaming Trump. They are calling for his removal. US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says President Donald Trump has committed an unspeakable assault on our nation and our people, and has called on Vice President Mike Pence to immediately invoke the 25th Amendment to remove him from office. Office. Some in the media and Congress seem to think that if Donald Trump is removed, everything will just go back to normal. Well, I think we all know that they're kidding themselves. The United States of America is no longer united. It is now a nation divided. There was probably once a time when Americans were truly united, where they would support one another simply because they were Americans. It didn't matter if you were a Democrat or a Republican. Because you're a fellow American, I'll support you through thick and thin. But now, red versus blue, which has been increasingly played up by the media, is destroying America. Increasingly, red states dislike blue states, and blue states dislike red states. It is a nation divided. It's easy for the media and celebrities to denounce the pro-Trump demonstrators and call them names by referring to them as the mob, by belittling them, by degrading them, by telling them that they're on the wrong side of history. They're doing the exact thing that started all of this. They're dismissing tens of millions of their fellow Americans who truly believe that the election was stolen. Tens of millions of Americans have lost faith in their system. The pro-Biden, pro-democratic media have relentlessly attacked Trump supporters and attacked them and attacked them and attacked them until eventually it led to the boil over that we witnessed at the Capitol. Of course, we should denounce violence in all its forms. It just leads to more friction and more violence, and reinforces the red-blue rivalry and hatred. Simply put, it just doesn't work. It doesn't matter if it's the left or the right committing the violence. It just doesn't work. But as blue Americans, just because you disagree with Trump supporters, just because you have denounced them as the mob, does not mean that everything is right in the world. Unfortunately, these tens of millions of Americans who voted for Trump are still here. Even if Trump is removed from office, that does not fix the fact that millions of your fellow Americans who disagree with you will still be living in your country. You may have nothing in common with them, you may secretly or even openly despise them, but I'm afraid you're stuck with them. Social media have tried their damnedest to shut them down. Every major social media platform is openly pro-Biden, anti-Trump. This complete disregard of the opinions of tens of millions of Americans is part of the reason America is falling. I don't agree with half the things the right have to say. I don't agree with half the things the left have to say. But I damn well defend their right to say it. That's what freedom of speech is. The social media platforms have lost the plot. They claim to be for freedom, but in reality, they're destroying freedom. 
They think by indefinitely censoring Trump that will somehow make everyone happy. All it's doing is dividing the nation even further. You might naively think that if you could just somehow divide the United States into two, all the progressives on one side, all the conservatives on the other, then somehow you'll fix this issue. All like-minded citizens will just somehow separate into peaceful nations on each half of the continent. Well, that's a fantasy. That simply will not happen. Peaceful separation has never happened, and it probably never will. Red and blue are inseparable. If either one leaves, the other half will die. America has long been successful because of its stable political democracy. Voters knew that if they didn't like the government, they could vote them out. Democracy responds to voters. As long as the citizenry sincerely believe that they can change things by voting, then they live happy and prosperous lives. They stay calm, taking comfort in the fact that the voter ultimately has power. But the opposite is also true. If people believe that their voting system is fraudulent, if they believe that their vote doesn't count, if they believe that a select group of powerful individuals are in control of the government and are manipulating the results, people will riot. And that's exactly what we're seeing in America. That's what we've been seeing in America. Both sides of politics are feeling that the system is failing them. Americans have no option but to work it out. If they don't, well simply put, America will go the way of all the other empires that came before it. It will fall. Is this the beginning of the end? I suspect that it is.